Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone had a great weekend. Today is President's Day, and we're all going to be able to make these awesome top hats because in honor of President's Day, we are going to be learning more about President Abraham Lincoln. Okay, let's get started. Let's learn some fun facts about Abraham Lincoln. His nickname was Honest Abe. We're going to be learning more about some honesty, too, today. But more about Abraham Lincoln. He was six foot four inches tall, which makes him our tallest president that we've ever had, still to this day. He was the first president to have a full beard. So he had this awesome top hat that made him look even taller. He was such a tall looking man. And he was the first president to have a full beard. And a fun fact about his top hat is a strategy that he used so he wouldn't forget important documents. He would roll up the documents and store them in his top hat. He would take his hat off and put his important documents in there. And when he took it off at night, he would be able to remember to sign those documents and, and fill them out. Isn't that cool, everyone? Okay, so let's learn a little bit more about honesty here. Can anyone tell me what honesty means? What is it? Yeah, Susie. Yes, that's right. We are honest when we are truthful. When we tell the truth, that is being honest. That's good. It's about being honest and true. Now let's 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 practice this a little bit. Everyone's going to get a worksheet. Let's see. This is what it's going to look like here. And we're going to read the instructions together. Miss Joy, is, we're going to go through it, and then Miss Joy is going to pass out a worksheet to everyone. But let's read the instructions first. So it says at the top here to cut out the words on the bottom of the paper and decide if the word describes honesty or dishonesty and paste the word in the correct category. So let's do one together, everyone. This word down here says liar. Okay, John, can you tell me what which column would liar go in? If you tell a lie, are you being honest or are you being dishonest? Very good, John. If you are lying, you're being dishonest. So we see here, we see the same word honest here, honest, but with the this in front of it means that you're not honest, dishonest. Very good. So the tools that you'll need to complete this assignment, you'll need a pencil because you'll need to write your name at the top, okay, to make sure you get credit for it. You're going to need your glue stick and your scissors. So at this time, everybody, let's pull out these, these tools from the backs of your chair, your chair pockets, okay? And if anyone has any issues with their glue sticks or scissors, you can go to the back of the room and get some out of the community then, okay? All right, so let's keep, let's work on this for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then we have another activity, and we're going to be able to learn a little bit more about President Lincoln. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, now that everyone's done with their, um, their worksheet, make sure you go take it to the back of the room and put it on the drying rack so your glue has time to dry and that they won't be sticky when you take them home to show your parents, okay? All right, so now we're gonna learn a little bit about reading comprehension, everyone. Comprehension, another word for comprehension is to understand. When we read things and we're learning our letters and we're learning words, and my kindergartners, this class, you are very smart kindergartners, and we already know a lot of words. So when we put those words together and we are able to read books and passages, and we can understand what we're reading. That is what reading comprehension means. So some strategies to better help us read and understand. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do to help us understand. We can relate the story of what we're reading to what we already know. So a great example of that is if Miss Joy read a book about a dog, she would be able to relate her experiences with her dog at home so, because I have three dogs at home. So once I read a book about a dog, I'll be able to understand what they're talking about from my own experiences with my dogs at home. Another great strategy to better understand what we're reading is to ask questions. If there are big words that we don't understand, or if we read something or see something we just don't quite understand, there's no problem at all in asking questions because that's how we learn is by asking questions and by understanding what we read. So it's very important that we understand what we're reading. Another great way to, is to make inferences from pictures. So we can take what we see in a picture and we can kind of guess in a way of what's about to happen or what's going to happen because pictures are illustrations for what's going on in our stories. Once we've read everything and we've comprehended 
A great way to take away important information from a larger book is to summarize important information. We can take a summary of the important plots, characters, themes, important information from the text to summarize what we've read. Okay? All right, so let's put our reading comprehension into practice. We're going to read this story. It's called I Am Abraham Lincoln, and it's by Brad Meltzer. It's a great story, and we're going to practice our reading comprehension. We're even going to be able to practice making inferences from the pictures. So everyone, let's pay attention as Miss uh, Joy reads this book, and then because we're going to go over it as a class, and we're going to have to remember what we just read, okay? So everyone go grab a carpet square and meet me in front of the reading chair. We're going to have story time. Okay, so that was a great story. Um, now let's go over what we read and see if we've comprehended what the story was trying to tell us. Okay, so when Abraham Lincoln was little, he loved to, now let's look at our word bank. I think, yes, very good, John, read. That's where we would put, that would be the answer there. The second question here, Abraham Lincoln saved a blank in the story. Can anyone remember what animal Abraham Lincoln help save in the story we just read? Susie, you can use the word bank if you need to. Yes, it was a turtle. Remember everyone, they put the hot coals on the turtle and Abraham Lincoln stood up for him. Yeah, we remember that part. And there was a picture about it too. Here's the next question. Abraham Lincoln walked how many miles to get a book? How many miles did he walk? Anybody remember? Let's take a look at our word bank. Alex. Yes, six. Very good. Okay. And now this might be an easy one. Everyone should remember this one. Which coin did Abraham Lincoln want to be on when he grew up? And this is an easy one because he is on this coin. If we were to get this coin out, his Abraham Lincoln's face would be on it. Yes, Amanda. Very good. A penny. Here it is in our word bank if we need help spelling it. Okay. And this is a great lesson to learn too is how many elections did President Lincoln lose before winning his presidency? It was four. It's our last word in the word bank. Very good everyone. So President Lincoln, he lost the election three times before he got voted president. So that just goes to show you even if you don't exceed the first, second, or third time, you just keep trying. If you really, really want to succeed at something, you can. President Lincoln is a great example, and we still talk about him and admire him today on President's Day. So that was a great way for us to practice our reading comprehension today. Now we're going to practice it again with the Berenstein Bears and the Truth. We love the Berenstein Bears, everyone. And we're about to watch an episode here of this, of this story. So let's all look at this picture really quickly, though. And let's try to make an inference about the text um, from the picture that we have in front of the book. Let's see, Mama Bear, she looks really frustrated. Can anyone kind of tell me what's going on over here? Susie, yeah, look at that lamp, it's broken. And look at them, they're pointing to each other and, they're, and they look like they're thinking about something like a bird knocked it over. I bet that has something about telling the truth. I wonder if they're gonna tell the truth about how the lamp got broken. Let's watch it and find out everyone. Okay, that was a fun movie to watch. Now we're gonna have a little test, everyone. And it's gonna, um, we're gonna look at reading comprehension again. So let's read the passage together. Miss <clears throat> uh, Joy is gonna pass it around and you're gonna have it face down, okay? So we'll read the passage and then I'll let you know when you can turn the paper over. So here, here we go. Today is President's Day. Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president of the USA. He wore a black top hat and a black beard. President Lincoln's nickname was Honest Abe. Okay, everyone, now that we've read the passage together, let's turn our sheets over and get started. So this is your own independent work. If you need a pencil, raise your hand, okay? Make sure you put your name at the top of the sheet. If you need help with something, understanding what the questions are asking, raise your hand and I'll come to your desk. We're gonna be doing this assignment silently, okay? And once we're finished, you turn the sheet back over and I'll come collect them. Okay, everyone, let's get started. 
Oh my goodness, everyone did a great job on their test. So now we're gonna learn a little bit about voting, but we're gonna learn in a fun way that gives our brain a break. So President Lincoln, he, we are here in a democracy in the USA and we are able to vote for our presidents and we have a lot of influence on the political decisions that are made. Okay, so you might not be old enough to vote for the president yet, but you will be able to vote for class presidents as you get older. And we'll be going into more detail about that next week. So let's get started on our brain break. Break everyone, push in your chairs behind your desk, get a lot of wiggle room and stay in your personal bubble and let's do our go noodle brain break dance. Here we go. Should I dance or should I not dance? Just stand to the side. Oh, 